Well, here I am. I turned 65 a couple of months ago and I'm still working part-time for insurance. Boy, I thought I could golf more working part-time, but that hasn't worked out. I wanted to prove my golf game, but I just have not. And I've tried to take some lessons, but it's getting frustrating. So I don't know. I got to think about what I'm doing. Anyways, my wife has told me many times that I have to expand my interests as far as my creativity, which I always thought I had none. She suggested another hobby like art. And when I heard that, I thought, oh my God. I mean, I've never done any art except stick people when I was in school. So I decided that that was that. But that all changed, really, when I think of it, when I met Ted. Hey Ted, Mark Ralston, how are you? Nice to meet you, come on in. Okay. Your wife asked me to give this to you. Dearest Mark, happy 65th. I wanted to get you something special. Okay, Ted, so you told me that uh, what really got you sort of involved in art is that you were doodling in your school book. Tell me the story about what happened there. Well, I used to really enjoy art classes and stuff when I was younger. One time when I was doodling in class, the teacher came over. I think that she was going to get me in trouble for the fact that I wasn't listening. But she saw what I was doing and she liked it. And then um, what ended up happening was... She told my parents about it and they ended up sending me to private art lessons and then everything really? kind of evolved from there. One of the things I thought I had to do when I think I was in school was tracing. So trace, say, a Volkswagen Beetle as opposed to try to draw it. So is tracing, is that a, a wrong thing to do? You've probably seen those photorealistic paintings before. Those are traced. Like oh. what they do is they start off by projecting an image onto like a canvas. They trace the projected thing very linear and they draw a grid on top of it. And they go into each individual square and they work on each square for like hours and hours and hours at a time to get it to that point where it's like super realistic and you can see the pores in the skin. Then they go onto the next square, then the next square, then the next square. Then they touch up the whole thing. What I'd suggest is while you're learning, tracing is a great way to sort of learn the forms. Like actually what I'd suggest is try tracing a car and then put away that drawing and then try doing it freehand. So how long did it take you to do the picture of Jack Nicholas? Definitely took me a long time. Like I usually paint for about three to six hours at a time. So I was just trying to figure out how many sessions I did it in. Probably 20 hours, maybe more. So drawing has, and painting has become a big part of your life. Is there any time in your life that it sort of helped you in any way, any event in your life that you sort of used art to, to help you get through a period in your life? Well, yeah, in 2016, um, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And, um, and while I was on chemotherapy, I was using art mostly in order to deal with it. I could use art, not as a reason just to, to survive, but as like a reason to really live and I could carry that on into my life, like beyond my cancer experience. Mm. Hey Keith, is that you? What are you working on here? Well, I'm doing some sketches, which I'll take home to prepare for a painting later on. 
I can't imagine just coming here and and starting to to, to sketch and, and paint. That's well, what's golf is much harder than sketching. Or really? Drawing. Yeah. Well, think about it. You got to get the right stance. You got to get perfect swing, swing the golf club with the perfect arc, hit the ball just right with the right amount of force, and you got to do it all in an instant. Of course, uh, you're drawing. You can do right. a line. You can change it if you don't like it. Take your time. Take as long as you want. Well, I wouldn't even know where to start because well, I do stick people. Well, so let's if I was here, let's draw a little stick guy. Now he's close by. He's in the foreground, so that's why I draw it nice and dark. Yeah. Now there's another guy further back. So by making them smaller, it looks like it's further uh, off. It gives you a sense of depth. I can't get over your drawings, and boy, I'm telling you, I I, I just have so much nervousness about even being able to even think about drawing i mean i was just down here practicing my golf swing and that in and of itself is is a struggle for me that i've done for many years so first few golf springs didn't look very good no that's true first ball you hit you didn't know where it was going to go same with your first painting you don't know it's going to go but unless you guys you start you won't know so stop complaining stop whining just get up and do it Mark, why don't you try drawing some of these up? Draw some of these logs. There's so many interesting shapes and shadows and darks and lights. It's a good thing to practice. So okay, well, give it a try. Hey, I can't guarantee it's going to look any good. But. Well, it'll, logs are all shapes, so you can't go wrong. They can be any no, shape. No, that's true. Okay, well. So try and get the outline and then work on where the shadows are. Okay. Just pick one log. Gotta go see Keith again for an important lesson. Keith said he has something to show me today. Hmm. I knew you were an artist, but this is pretty amazing. Wow. Well, I've done it, you know. You've got a great gallery of pictures. I see even different things. Ooh, wow, look at this. That's Jack Nicholas. Now, is it for sale? It could be, yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'd really love to buy that because I'd like to add it to, I, I collect them, I don't sell them. I just collect them because they're unique type of things from different people that uh, shows a different perspective. And that's, I guess, what art is, right? Showing a different perspective? Absolutely, yeah. Every painting starts with a single brush stroke and then you just build up from there. Right, like I see the wave there, like how do you get the mist? You put on wet paint, and then you take a paper towel or a tissue and you kind of lift it, wipe it. So wow. You can't make a mistake, you know, you just, okay, you mess it up, get another piece of paper, it's no big deal. I've got to overcome that fear of, you know, doing things and it's good to hear you say those type of things. Well, a lot of people are afraid of making mistakes, which is why they don't do it. But forget all that. There's no right or wrong. It's not about making mistakes. It's just about enjoying it. Mm -hmm. you know? When I was a child, I was always drawing and painting. But as I got older, life got busy working and raising a family. And I didn't do anything artistic for a long time. Then at the age of 63, when I was very active, cycling and running, I had a near-fatal bicycle accident. I was in hospital for six weeks, and when I came home, I was in a pretty bad place mentally. Couldn't do much. So I needed to find ways to keep busy. And I started drawing and painting again. This gave me a new lease on life. Hi. Gabriel and I are just doing some painting. Where's your paintbrush? Let me see, I see uh... Uh, I don't typically use a brush when I paint. I use a blower and then I just oh, blow the paint. Yeah, sometimes I end up with something I don't like, but 
you know, there's like art therapy. This is kind of like my right. own version of art therapy. And I just kind of do it. I'll just kind of pour them on here and then blow them. Have an idea, like a rough idea in your mind of where, kind of where you want to end up. It's like a mixing kind of effect. Good job. You may need a little bit more uh, liquid. I just kind of like paint and then later on I'm like, ooh, I can do something else. And that's why I find it very freeing. I like how you're getting into it with your body, like you're almost dancing. So are you finding it stressful or therapeutic? Yeah, that looks really cool. Charge Studio. I'm wondering what I'm in here for. Hello. Oh. Hi, hi, I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. A friend of mine, Keith Keynes, gave me your business card, oh, suggested I come and see you. Nice to meet you, Mark. Susan, have you always done glasswork? Absolutely not. I didn't do anything artistic. I even gave away my knitting project in grade 7. I didn't do anything until I was 47. I put everything away when I was 10 years of age because my parents said, Susan, you will never make it in life if you don't get serious about life. You can't make a living as an artist. Start getting serious and doing something meaningful with your life. I had an intervention. I felt like something was dying inside of me. And at that time, I was a dental hygienist. And my husband was dealing with me crying you know, he had been told he was an artist since he was like four. And so he never doubted that part of himself. So he was really encouraging me and I fought him all the way. So friends of ours, a husband and wife, who are professional counselors, he brought them in one weekend and they gave me, and I had an intervention. And the next week, I quit dental hygiene. And I had no idea if I could do anything artistic. I was absolutely terrified. For the next two years, I drove my husband absolutely nuts, doubting everything I did. Should I use yellow? Should I use purple? Should that line be here? And he'd say, it's up to you. You're the artist. No, I'm not. I'm not creative. Because I've gone through a lot of transformation myself and, and being really the poster child for Carl Jung's disowned self. I'm not an artist. I can't do this. I'm not creative. And then finding my own journey. If people are together that work together and you ask, how do you express your creativity? People start going, I didn't know you played the banjo. I didn't know that you did this or played this or, or sketch this. And this one woman, when I said, how do you express your creativity? She held up her pencil and she said, I'm an accountant and that's how I'm creative. And I've never forgotten her because creativity is in everything and anything. It's how you make a stew. It's how you uh, plant a garden. And she knew, she knew herself. She knew that she expressed that in her accounting. Do you think you could live without class fusion art now? 
I owned that I was an artist, and I did that struggle at age 47. Then I went into the corporate world for 13 years, and I turned my back on my art and this studio. And I stared at walls after my corporate, uh, I left the corporate world completely burned out. And I started working with small pieces of glass to make little pendants, just to warm up my fingers and start to get back here. So much of her work when she creates pendants is, is based on the butterfly wing. And we realized that the butterfly wing is a symbol of transformation. And a lot of the women that Susan was working with, uh, you know, we've all had a bit of a, trans a transformation in our lives. My marriage was busting up and it was a tough time, but in fact at that stage I was living on a boat and I was blue water sailing. So here is the, represents the water and then the sunset above at the time when I was, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff you never want to deal with. Do you see yourself as creative? I do now, in all honesty. Um, creativity has become a large part of my lifestyle. Fused glass uh, was brand new to me. I never heard of it before. Uh, I didn't know anything about glass. I didn't know it was involved in bending glass, shaping glass, cutting glass. I'd never been exposed to working with glass at all. So I got to approach it from a sense of being an absolute newbie with no expectations and being a 100% perfectionist. Uh, I, I get very critical of myself when I am doing even like my painting, as I mentioned before. And I remember the first time I saw my plate when it came out of the kiln. I actually screamed because I thought it was so darn pretty. It's very satisfying at the end of the day to end up with a piece of artwork that you've created with your own hands. So this was an honest way to be creative with no judgment, with as much flair as you wanted to put into it. And it was fun and it was easy. Susan makes it so easy. That's a golf ball, by the way. <laughs> wow, what a day. These artists are fantastic. I can't believe Susan started at age 47. Maybe I can do this. Okay, Keith said I should visit Odette's gallery next. Hi Odette, my name is Mark. Hi Mark, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, a friend of mine, Keith Keynes, gave me your business card and sent me here to meet another inspirational artist. Oh, well, that's nice of him to say that. <laughs> I don't know if I told you, but I'm very nervous about being able to learn art because I, I I just didn't think I could do it, and I've only done stick drawing, so I'm worried about coming here and you're telling me I really don't have the ability. I have a lot of failures. I, I, would you like to see my basement with the uh, paintings that I'm going to throw out? <laughs> Everybody does. And speaking of that, I had a teacher in uh, art school who, he, one of his exercises to, he would give us was to paint as a child, to draw as a child. He says, you have to learn to draw and paint as a child and then be, become a, a better artist. Like, I'll give you this example. Uh, a child would draw a table instead of in perspective with the legs going straight down, the legs of the table would be flayed out as if it like fell on its face, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And he encouraged that so that we could get a feel of it and then go into, you know, developing our art. Your students, are they always open to being creative when they first come to see you? Most of the people that I have have never painted before. Yeah, and so they, they just develop as, as they go along and I just kind of gently help them along with whatever little bit that they need. So if you had a goal, what is your goal? I'd like to paint 
golf courses and golf holes. Okay, if that's what you like to do, bring in some photos because that's when the painting comes out the best, when it's something you're interested in. I've only recently begun art. Um, I kind of grew up in a world of sport. So I semi-retired um, a couple of years ago and one of the things I've always deep down wanted to try was art and painting in particular. And, uh, and so I started the journey about a year and a half ago. I didn't come in with a lot of confidence. Um, a desire, for sure. Um, I like doing things well, but I sort of look around and think, I can't really do any of this. But Odette's been great to work with because she really has a way of bringing the best out in you. And um, I think she got who I was pretty quick and as a result, let me go down my path. I started as a child, really. I always loved drawing and painting. And I grew up on Vancouver Island, so I kind of went away from it in my early 20s. I dabbled a bit, but then uh, I moved to Salt Spring and I was raising my children. And It wasn't until they were grown, or almost grown, that I went back to it. Odette as a teacher, I feel it has really brought me along as an artist, and my confidence is growing as I go along as an artist. Each of these paintings represent an image that has come to mind. And ultimately, when I look at my hands, they offer peace, a sense of calm, a sense of peace, a sense of um, anticipated healing or integration or a coming together of sorts. So the reason they're in the painting is, is I actually look to my hands for, in a space of the unknown. They don't tell me anything, obviously but there's just some sort of calm. This is an opportunity for me to learn something new and as that content of self comes out, what form might it take? I learned the Chinese calligraph uh, since I was a child uh, as a hobby. Um, I often enjoy Chinese paintings and sometimes I try uh, to print Chinese paintings. This is how to use the color and uh, how to make the new color, right. the different color, how to make. Wow, and uh, uh, this three picture only use oh, two color. Just two color? Yeah, just two color. Wow. And this one is use uh, purple and yellow, two color, make this one. I tend to be a perfectionist. And through the years, I think I got very discouraged by art because it had to be perfect. These ones I have uh, worked on in Odette's studio using a palette knife and just kind of having fun with it, not getting hung up on minor details. So, Tom, what is a palette knife? I don't understand that. You, you know, there are different size palette knives, just as there are different size paint brushes, so you can achieve a, a very large effect or a very tiny effect, just with a quick flick or a drag, and, you know, you can load up the paint and you don't have to worry about, you know, getting it in the right spot. You can kind of move the paint around and and create whatever effects you want. So I tried to achieve that in my uh, more recent works. My wife was actually the one who kind of twisted my arm because I've uh, had a desire to do art for quite a number of years and get back at it. I haven't done maybe oil painting for about 20 years. So I, I needed an impetus to get me back in it. My wife was the one who, one day when we were up walking around in this area, she said, let's go up and see if there are some lessons and see what's available and sure enough I got hooked and I do love art. Yeah. I guess hearing your story I'm now ha gonna have to listen to my wife despite what I might think. So thanks again Odette for giving me some information and I got a lot to think about. Oh, well I'm happy to help you Mark and I think you're gonna do really well just one step at a time. Great okay thank you. <laughs> Well, what a journey. I've finally been able to look into art and understand it and realize that maybe it's not as difficult as I thought it would be. I really didn't think I could do it and I was nervous about it, but I decided to keep an open mind and realize that if I listen to people and observe that I can actually learn it and get some real enjoyment out of drawing and painting. So really when I look back at everything, my ability to express myself through art has really enriched my life.